All right, and here we are again. I'm with Mike, Mike Vashani, my friend and a guru in commercial property. We're talking today about something very special. It's actually not just going to be about the stuff that you can learn from, but we're going to use a real example. We're going to use an example that I actually just ran out, uh, ran into this morning and said like, you know what, why would I just kind of hide all this and finish the job? Let's share it so everybody can learn off it. Sounds so uh, we have uh, the, the topic is investment property. So you are just sitting in your office and a client calls you and says, you know what, I saw this property online. It's investment property. It's five plus, five units and they're selling it for two million. And I want you to tell me whether I should buy it or not. So anyway, <laughs> I hear that all the time. <laughs> so we're talking investment properties and what, how to analyze them. Money can buy love. Nothing wrong with being rich. Just gotta find that magic niche. Nothing wrong with being rich. Ooh. So we're back, Mikey. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. good. Thank you. You are the man. You just actually came back from signing one of these deals, right? To send loan docs on one of these deals, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. Actually, a five unit deal. A five unit deal. So it was all meant to be. That's the key. That's the key point here. So anyway, uh, we got different types of investments and one of the uh, particular ones that are rather easy to do and uh, but but th where your client is really uh, basing, you know, putting faith into some uh, agent's skill to actually help them out make a decision. If they're not an experienced investor, otherwise they don't even let you kind of analyze it they analyze it themselves like you do yeah. for yourself <laughs> i do and uh and we talk we're talking about uh multifamily yeah i think when you look at investment property um the standard is kind of a one to four units that's considered residential property when you think five units or above you think commercial properties they're still the same residential properties but from a lending perspective but also the mindset. An investor who's experienced is probably buying more of the five and above. Someone who's new who just wants to get their feet wet is buying that one to four, maybe a single family home yeah. or a four unit, like a, a duplex or a fourplex. Yeah, you usually have like people that want to, you know, dip their feet into the waters of investing. They're kind of in this uh, point where they would maybe buy a multifamily, two, three, four units where they could live in one and then rent the rest. So like, oh, you know, what's the best way to go with, yeah. their, with their money at that time? So Well, that's, that's the key right there. If someone's going to live in one of the units and buy a one to four unit, they can get a traditional loan. Yep. They can do it with 20% or 25% down. But if you're going to buy a five unit building or a commercial lending loan, then you're looking at 35 to 40% down. Sometimes less than that, but typically 35%. Okay, well, so we're looking at uh, f uh, financing versus uh, cash. So in this market, uh, the inventory is going pretty fast. So we're going to analyze and see whether this two million property can make sense, okay. right? So what we have, have something like this, and I'll show you on the screen right now. And this property is uh, one house, uh, two bedroom, two bath, and another building with four one bedroom, one bath units. Okay, you are actually getting the actual rents from them to see where you're standing according to what you can act, where you can get the property and that's where you make your profit and that's where you profit you're, you're buying things hopefully on the actual with hoping to get to the performa and you make your profits in and the that's future. exactly and that's what we're going to see here because there is a large discrepancy as we saw here between what the property actually has and where it can be right Right. So currently we have, so the property is sold, uh, offered for $2 million. We have three units out of the five that have actual rents in the range of 1100 to 1300 for the one bedroom and 1800 for the two bedroom. Uh, there's obviously stuff missing and they did mention in their script, in their uh, description, that there is opportunity for ADUs in the freestanding garages they have. So I know that you did some ADU and stuff like that. Tell us about it. Yeah, so one thing is when you're buying an investment property, one is the cash flow of the actual cash flow you're getting now. Two is the cash flow I can get from what I have right now on the market. And then three is what can I add on to the area, the building, to make more money. 
And luckily in California right now, the laws are very open mm -hmm. to allow more development because of the whole affordable housing issue we have of, of homes. Yeah. So if you have extra land or you have detached garages, you could potentially remove those garages and build additional units or build the top of those. It only depends on the situation. Right. And you can maybe spend $200,000 to build one unit, but you're going to get $2,000 a month of rent. Absolutely. And you do the math and you're making a good return. And so if I know I'm getting a building that's not making a lot of money right now, but if I add an ADU and I add my total cost and I've just increased my percent by 2 or 3%, I have a, a good deal here, which I can keep for cash flow or I can maybe resell in the future. Absolutely. And that will definitely bring the price of the pro uh, property up. Yes. I know just uh, recently before the ADUs, which like get generated last year, I think that was. Last, last two like years. That, and two years, huh? And multifamily, they just gave a, a more more uh, allowances for ADUs. A new law came out this last January. Yeah, that's that the extended the multifamily one. Right, right, right. So, so I know before that we were looking into any kind of nothing, you know, cranny where we can actually squeeze something in, and it would be like you know just enclosing the parking spots into garages, which would eventually increase rents, so that immediately you can create some value. I'm doing that right now <laughs> on a building. <laughs> The one I signed loan docs right, today on. Right, right, right. We're enclosing the carport. Yes. That's, that's There's one unit above it. There's four parking spots. The city said, the city of LA said, you don't need parking there anymore. We're going to enclose that area, add a door, make a 600 square foot unit ADU. It's going to cost me $150,000 to $200,000. I'll get $2,000 a month rent, $24,000 a year, spend over $200,000. What a good return. Absolutely. So there is those... Uh, upsides to this property and I'm kind of glad to see that now, what else could you did you notice here yeah so the first thing I looked at was what were the rents and I can see that the rents there are around six thousand to seven thousand dollars a month on actual I can see that the performers based on my experience are probably ten thousand dollars a month so they're selling the building on seven thousand dollars a month income and I know I can get ten thousand or eleven thousand if I find ways to increase the rent over the next few years. Sure. Not that simple. Right. You have to go through a process. You have to deal with relocating tenants or tenants moving out and finding new tenants. But I know there's potential. Sure. So I looked at that. I'm looking at the potential of the ADU. Let me just kind of revert back to this because yeah. this property is in LA. So this is a rent control area. So it's not that simple to, uh, to uh, raise the rent. But there is a method to it, yes. and uh, if if you follow the rules and everything else, you can actually get to a point where you can actually get all these units uh, re replacing tenants and putting some market rents. Considering that's, the plan. that's, that's what you and, want, and, and and considering that these rents that they have right now are way below market, that is that potential. So for a little work, you can really make a lot. You know the the biggest thing about looking at properties and investing in multifamily is. You have to look at what your goals are. If your goal is to buy this and resell it right away, you have to look at it differently if you're going to buy it and hold it 5 or 10 or 15 years. Right. Because it usually takes 3 to 5 years to stabilize your property so that you're not losing money on the property every month. If that, that makes sense. Sure. So if I buy a property, my mortgage, after all my cost, it costs me $6,000 a month and I'm paying and I'm only getting $5,000 a month in income. I'm losing $1,000. That's okay because that $1,000 loss for the first two or three years is going to become a gain in the future as I stabilize it, as I increase the rent, as I build the ADU, as I get new tenants, as I just make the place better. Sure. Value added. Sure. So I looked at this. I looked at your, the numbers here and I did a quick analysis. Okay. So if I was a buyer on this property or my client asked me to look at it, I looked at the actual income, and like I said earlier, the actual income was around um, six thousand, seven thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And at two million dollars, it doesn't seem that attractive, right? Because if I make seven thousand dollars a month, and I'm rounding up here, so I'm actually a little better than it actually is. If I make seven thousand dollars a month, that's eighty-four thousand dollars a year. That's gross. Net, I have to go all the expenses. What net means? is I'm taking out all the monthly expenses to maintain the building, to pay for the property manager, to pay for all the utilities, and whatever else is involved to keep the building maintained and taken care of. Sure. That includes also the cost of property taxes, 
and insurance. The mortgage payment is not part of your, in- your net income. Correct. That's yep. after net income. Yep. Yep. So if my net income on this is, um, let's say I make um, $84,000 a year, and for simplicity says I'll use 100000 Right. So I make $100,000 a year. I know right away I take out 35 to 40% for all of the cost. That's a general factor. Sure. If I know nothing about the building, I'll That's take 40% what off. Would use. Uh-huh. That covers all my expenses every month besides mortgage. Okay, so $100,000, I make $60,000, 40% off. Mm-hmm. $60,000 of income on $2 million means that I'm making 3% a year. I'm taking 60000 over the, the value of the property yeah, in a one-year basis and saying how much I'm making. Right. So 3%. Well, in today's market, 3% is low, but in this part, we're near Sherman Oaks, people are willing to pay that. Right. All about the potential. And really, we're really around 3.5% here. So maybe even 4% if you look at the real numbers. Right. Um, so I'm looking at that and I'm saying, okay, if I buy this property now, and I'm getting 4% right now, or 3.5%, would I buy it? A lot of people say, yes, I'd buy this, I'm happy, I'm going to hold it 20 years, and I'm good with that. That's for the long term. Yeah. If they're getting a mortgage, mm-hmm. and they're paying 5% on it, they're losing money. Of course. So they got to figure out how to make more money on it. So I'm making 35 or 4%. I know when I did my performer numbers, I'm going to go up to, um, let's say, let's say I'm, we had $10,000 a month in income. So hundred and twenty thousand versus the hundred thousand. Right. That's twenty thousand dollars more in income. So I take out the. Uh, That's without investments, the investment in the ADUs and so on, just right. on the rent side. If I can get the rents to the market, right now that's not that simple. Yeah. But let's say I can. Mm-hmm. So I make ten thousand a month on that hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year, and I take the forty percent off. Forty percent of that's about fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, forty thousand about fifty thousand dollars. So I'm making about. Um, about seventy seventy thousand now, ten thousand dollars more, or eighty thousand around there. So now my return is instead of instead of being three percent, I'm at four percent. Right. Or if I was at four, I'm at five. So when I looked at this thing, I said, okay, I'm at three and a half to four percent right now. If I do all the performers, I'm at five percent. I make about a one percent difference. Is that worth it? Still, that by itself may not be. There's not enough of return there. Now I look at the ADUs. If I can actually build two or three ADUs, and let's say I build the ADUs, they cost usually about $200 a foot to build, okay. and I build three ADUs. Let's just say that, and this way I don't know. Right. There's how many, what I can, I would have to look into what I can build here. Mm-hmm. Let's say I can build two ADUs, and each ADU is 600 square feet. 600 square feet times 200,000, 250, maybe $150,000 per ADU. I spent $300,000 to build two ADUs. Each ADU is gonna bring me $2,000 a month rent. So. I'm going to spend three hundred thousand dollars right. to make four thousand dollars a month of gross rent. Right. For so four that's forty eight thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. I spent three hundred thousand. Yep. If you do a simple factor on that, forty forty eight thousand dollars a year over three hundred thousand dollars, you can do you can do the number on that on a return. It's a pretty good yeah, return. That's a, yeah. That's a pretty good return. You're making over ten percent or twelve percent return. That's a pretty good return. I'll take that number, bring it back to my other factors, and say, okay, now that three that three and a half percent. Actual, that 5% market is now 7% with the ADU. Now, these numbers are not exact based right, upon yeah, this. Yeah. This is going real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it makes sense to me. It's going to be my goals. What are my goals? So for my client, if they ask me, should I buy this property? I don't know the answer yet. There's so many more factors. I would first want to find out what's their goals, long-term or short-term. Right. Okay. Well, that seems so. So the question, uh, the verdict on this property would be that it does deserve further investigation. I would, def- I would definitely say this one deserves further investigations because one, you're in Sherman Oaks area. Yeah. That's a hot area. That's, that's the area between the Valley and LA. And there's some really good areas and not so good areas. But it doesn't matter. People want to live there because it's close to the job area. Mm-hmm. It's close to the core of LA. Yep. So that alone makes me want to, that alone makes me look at that and say, hmm, this intrigues me. In fact, when you showed it to me, I said, oh, where is this? <laughs> then I saw the price of two million. I said, well, five units, two million. It sounds good for Sherman Oaks, but then I looked at the actual rent. The actual rent, most people would run from that. It's too low. Right. But we're in Sherman Oaks. The actual rent is around three to three and a half percent, kind of low. 
I don't know all the expenses, but let's say three and a half percent. It's still doable. So yes, I would look at that. Okay. So yes. So so here's and a, then the ADUs and everything else makes it even better. So yes, I would absolutely. look at this in more detail. So oh. if you look at like okay, now this is particularly for a client that we don't know uh, what their long term or short term goals are. Right. But I have another client that has cash and they are sitting on cash. They don't know what to do with it, and with every day it's re losing value. Totally different picture now. Totally different picture. So this client with the cash can buy this property. He's positioned a nice chunk of, ch chunk of change into it. Doesn't have any restrictions as far as financing and stuff like that. He can add another 500,000, uh, 600,000 to it to develop the ADUs. And he can, he can, he's, He's ahead of the game, whether he just flips it or he uh, waits for the market to change. Well, that's the same kind of analysis we did before. Right. The reason that we look at net operating income, it's as if it's a cash buyer. Right. So we already know the returns. So for that cash buyer, it's a model. Bottom line is, how much kind of return do they want on their cash? Mm -hmm. If I put that cash, if I put that $2 million in the bank and I get 1%, or I can put the $2 million in the property, and I get 4%, or if I do all this stuff, I can get 5 or 6 right. or 7%. But I'm getting this 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 7% now, and I don't have a mortgage. But how much equity gain am I getting in the future? Right. That's the key. Well, uh, well, that would actually just be a historical or a predicament where we have to go, where, where is the property, where is the market going, and what type of neighborhood it's in. True, but you know, and one thing because you, in some neighborhoods you don't have that growth, and some yes. you do. Well, and one thing about investing is, if someone's putting cash into a deal, it's not always the best thing, because the way you make your money is leveraging. For every dollar you put in, how much can you leverage that? So here's an example: if I put, if I if I have one dollar, and I go get a loan, I can get. Let's say 20% the music factor. I can get five times, right? right. So I put $200,000 in, or in this case, it's $2 million. I put in $400,000. I got a $2 million loan. My actual investment is $400,000, not $2 million. Sure. So I'm going to make a better long-term return and in the next 5, 10, 15 years. Typically, if I put 20% down, in 10 to 15 years, I will make a five -turn, at least a five-turn refold. A five five time five time return time, yeah five, five full, full return, return on that minimum right. maybe even ten so if I if I buy two million dollars today and I sell it for three million dollars in ten years from now but I put four hundred thousand dollars is my investment I'm real simple math I put four hundred thousand dollars into it I made three million dollars take that division on that how many how many is that five six seven almost eight times right. I'm almost made an eight time return. Now it's not that simple, right? But that's what I'm saying. But it's it, leverage. But is there, the there is that leverage is actually so we're going more complicated into analysis of it, and that's what that's why what I asked I about usually the do is. for the west side because the west side you can't actually make a good deal unless you put more money in. Yes. No people say like you will lose money if you don't put at least thirty five to forty exactly, percent in, exactly. in the first five years. So basically, like then if you're kind of really kind of putting some thought into this. And you kind of figure out what your current income is, what your expenses are, and so on. And you leverage, you kind of balance that against a certain amount of the loan so that you are actually at zero. Yes. That is uh, the kind of like the sophisticated way to go. And the magic factor? The smallest amount of money that makes you the deal most... Uh, uh, most return. With the best return, right. So... I would say here's the easy, if you're a first time investor or an investor buying a property and we're looking at this property here, mm -hmm. if you were to put around 35% down, you will probably be even every month where you have no negative cash flow. Right. The reality is you actually have positive cash flow because you're paying down the principal with some of the money, right. but from an actual dollar value, right. you are not negative. Right. So you're actually paying down your loan. So, so, you, so when I say about leverage, mm -hmm. That one dollar, so I put in I put in four hundred thousand dollars, but in thirty years from now, guess what? I put in four hundred thousand dollars. Let's say I put thirty five percent down today, and thirty years from now, that property's paid off. It's completely paid off. I still only invested thirty five percent, but now how much money do I have in the bank? Yeah, yeah. and that's 
And the most simple investor is thinking that way. It's cash flow and how much will I have in the future? And that's why I ask you, what kind of client is it? Is it a cash client, an experienced investor, someone who has very little cash capital, or someone who has too much capital and has to put it somewhere else because it's sitting in the bank? Correct. And uh, yeah, and, 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 and there is also forms and different uh, calculators that can help calculate this. There's a lot of ratios you can use. I'll share some of these down in the, in the links in the video. And uh, that can help you actually figure, you know, put these numbers in and figure out some numbers okay. and so on. And yeah. most uh, people kind of use it as reference. Uh, and if you're experienced, you already know how to like, approach this like we have just now in this well, conversation. Well, like you're going to hear a gross rent multiplier, GRM. Right. You're going to hear return on investment, ROI. You're going to hear um, NOI, net operating income. You're going to hear an IIR. IIR. You get all these different kind of returns. The most you're gonna need GRM and ROI are the ones that most people use. And the one I hear most from Mike is my gut. My, <laughs> my gut works. My gut tells me, and you know what? Every time it works. <laughs> and that's why I think having someone who can really analyze your stuff is so important. Like your client says, analyze this. Yeah. I'm giving them the first analyzation of it. They're, they're gonna look at themselves. I'm going to look at it knowing everything I know about them and we're going to compare notes. My experience is going to be help guide them, but they're, they're going to go by their gut too. Right. Sometimes you buy a property. I'm buying the property right now in North Hollywood. I'm buying that property. My gut says to buy it. Right. My numbers so, are kind of mixed. Uh, you know why? I don't have a lot of land there, but I have a good building. Right. So, you never so know. So anyway, uh, to cut this story short, <laughs> uh, but yes, the, the verdict is yes, buy it. <laughs> <laughs>